Hi, and welcome to this episode of Making Fun of the News, which covers April 10th through May 12th. I used to do these every week, but now I'm just doing it whenever I get a few pages of jokes built up, I'm going to make an episode. So here we are. I have four pages of jokes. And also I have a new double chin because I've been eating too many donuts. So here we go. (laughs) In sad news, Kelly Osborne's grandmother died in 1999. On April 22nd, 2023, somebody who looked like they could be Kelly's grandmother died. Barry Humphreys, most known for his character, Dame Edna Everidge, died at 89 years old. Humphreys created Edna Everidge in 1995 when she was still just a regular broad. I always thought that Dame Edna was British, but it turns out Humphreys was Australian. My condolences to his family. Recently, Humphreys was dealing with complications after he had a titanium hip replacement after he tripped on a rug, which I guess is worse than tripping on a drug. Recently, I came up with an idea where if somebody in the future tells me something really stupid, I'm going to reply, your new nickname is Travelocity because you're tripping. But that has nothing to do with this story, so let's keep it moving. This is the face he made after he read the invoice showing how much his new hip is going to cost. Humphreys died in a hospital surrounded by his family and machines. No word whether his family buried his wig with him, but they're going to bury his beard next to him. It's time for another red carpet roast, this time of the annual Met Gala fundraiser, which this year the theme was a tribute to legendary designer Karl Lagerfeld who was known for his white and black outfits. So a lot of the attendees wore black and white, which luckily they'll be able to repurpose if they ever attend a Oreo convention. Kim Kardashian wore an outfit mostly made of pearls. It took her over a year to produce all the pearls from her clam. She hadn't pulled a train this long since she got gangbanged by the Los Angeles Lakers. That was a good one. Rapper Lil Nas X played it safe. The less material you wear, the less chance Tom Webster has material to make fun of you. Rihanna repurposed a parachute that she had hidden behind her jacket during her Super Bowl performance in case she fell off that elevated platform. Glenn Close wore a dress that looked like a bed skirt for the Jolly Green Giant. Everyone's favorite lip-syncing dancer, Jennifer Lopez, had to be propped up by two structures to support her giant ego and butt cheeks. A mystery guest showed up in a cat costume in honor of Karl Lagerfeld's famous cat. And when they removed their head, it was revealed to be Jesus Christ, finally risen from the dead. It was actually actor Jared Leto. And when photographers saw that it was him, they were like, put the head back on. His cat costume looked more real than most attendees' faces. Speaking of which, Nicole Kidman wore her fifth facelift. Olivia Wilde wore a violin dress that hit all the wrong notes. Anyway, it was nearly identical to another dress by some woman who I didn't even bother to identify. Wearing the same outfit to a major event like this is a major faux pas, faux show. When you're so embarrassed by an outfit that a stylist presented to you, just be like Billie Eilish's brother Phineas and wear a raincoat to cover it all up, even when it's not raining. Elle Fanning looked like she stole some flowers from Karl Lagerfeld's grave. (laughs) Finally, rapper Doja Cat wore a prosthetic nose to try and look like an actual cat. It looked okay from far away, but the more you zoomed in, the worse it got, which is the same reason why I film making fun of the news from so far away. Ouch. My... Ow. 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 Fox News agreed to pay $787 million to Dominion Voting Systems after they aired false reports about the 2020 election being rigged. Fox owner Rupert Murdoch consoled himself by hugging his my pillow. Fox News host Tucker Carlson was fired after offensive text messages he wrote were leaked. Those messages were supposed to remain private per terms of the settlement agreement. So Fox News sent a demand to Dominion to say you need to investigate who leaked those text messages, but Fox's email request bounced back with a message saying that everybody at Dominion is now retired and they don't get cell phone reception on the island of Fiji. In my notes here, I wrote in parentheses, not funny. 
but I still included it. Next. Fox is currently auditioning potential replacement hosts, and one night they even allowed Ann Coulter's Adam's Apple to try hosting. Maybe there's a chance for me. Meanwhile, CNN fired their longtime host, Don Lemon, mostly because he said that women in their 50s are not considered to be in their prime. I just want to state for the record that any female at any age who is alive, I consider her to be in her prime. Was that convincing? Or do I have to film a few more takes? In a statement, CNN's chairman thanked Don for his service and said they will be cheering him on in his future endeavors, which will probably include getting drunk at Mardi Gras. Ow. Joe Biden announced his re-election campaign for 2024. His slogan is four more months, if I'm lucky. He's a nice guy, but his brain is more damaged than a retired NFL linebacker. There have been a lot of articles recently about the dangers of AI, artificial intelligence, so I decided to give Microsoft Bing's chat a try since I was feeling a little bit uninspired and lazy, and I asked it to write some jokes for me. So this is 100% real. It's not one of my usual stupid jokes. I recorded my screen so you can see behind me what I did. I asked Microsoft Bing AI chat to write a joke about Joe Biden's presidential re-election campaign in the style of Tom Webster's making fun of the news, like they really know who I am. Anyway, after a few seconds, it replied, here is a joke I wrote. Joe Biden announced that he will run for re-election in 2024, saying that he has unfinished business to do. He also said that he has a lot of energy and enthusiasm for the job, and that he is not too old to be president. He then proceeded to take a nap on his podium. I replied, okay, that actually made me laugh. And then chat replied, I'm glad you liked it. Do you want to hear another joke? I had nothing better to do, so I said yes. Okay, here's another joke. Joe Biden said that he is confident that he can win the 2024 election despite his low approval ratings and the rise of new challengers. He said that he has a secret weapon that will guarantee his victory. He then revealed that his secret weapon is a time machine that will take him back to 2020 when he was more popular and less senile. I replied, oh my God, you're funnier than me. I have to go, bye. So I think we've learned two things, that AI is scary. And secondly, that like Pete Davidson's girlfriend, I'm easily replaceable. Bye. Ow. 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 <laughs> An American Airlines plane engine caught fire after it flew through a flock of geese. Canadians are always ruining Americans' vacation plans, like that time Celine Dion canceled her Las Vegas show and fans were forced to go watch Donnie and Marie Osmond instead. When passengers heard a loud clanking noise, they thought it was two people in the bathroom trying to join the Mile High Club. The pilots were alerted to the trouble when they heard the passengers loudly singing, This plane is on fire! Tragically, the flight took off from and safely landed in Columbus, Ohio. Haven't those people already suffered enough? Kidding. I think it's fairly obvious that the solution to these geese accidents is to open up all the windows on the plane and give guns to the pilots and all the passengers so that if they see any approaching geese, they can just shoot them before they get near the engine. This story had a happy ending. No, not the kind of happy ending that John Travolta likes to get with his massages. To make up for the long delay, American Airlines compensated the hungry passengers with free goose burgers, freshly sliced. I love animals more than I like humans, so I don't really like to make fun of their untimely deaths, but sometimes I find it hard to come up with content for making fun of the news, so any kind of kindness or morals that I have kind of like go by the wayside. Next, a McDonald's in Louisville, Kentucky violated child labor laws after officials discovered two 10-year-olds working until 2 a.m. But what was the investigator doing at McDonald's until 2 a.m.? Hmm, coming home from the local strip club? Louisville lap dances? The good news is the kids got to stay up way past their bedtime and drink unlimited milkshakes. The bad news is if you ordered from them, this is how they prepared your Big Mac. The investigation revealed that the two children were visiting their parent who was the night shift manager. But I need to know, were they twins visiting their mom or half siblings visiting their dad? It's time to investigate. 
Officials grew suspicious after a customer reported that their child's Happy Meal came with a job application. McDonald's competitor, Booger King, released a statement saying, we may use horse meat, but at least we don't employ children. Ow. 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 Police in New Jersey launched an investigation after hundreds of pounds of pasta were found in the woods next to a water supply, like also known as a creek or a river. Welcome to New Jersey, the Olive Garden State. The mystery was solved when a neighbor looked at their doorbell security camera and saw a man pushing a wheelbarrow full of pasta after he discovered a bunch of boxes of pasta in his mom's pantry after she died. The man was identified as Al Dente. No, he wasn't. I'm kidding. Anyway, that reminded me of a different story. One time I was about to take a flight and the gate agent came on the intercom and said, would Al Qaeda please report to the gate agent? And all of the passengers were looking at each other like, Al-Qaeda? Like ISIS? <laughs> the mother of the six-year-old boy who shot his teacher gave her first interview and said that he suffers from ADHD, which stands for attention deficit in high definition. Apparently, he can only pay attention long enough to pull a trigger, but not to stick around to provide medical assistance. The mother's name is Deja Taylor. Is her middle name Vu? She got charged with not preventing her son from accessing her gun, which she said was locked up. Probably she's going to be locked up pretty soon. <laughs> the teacher is suing the school for $40 million since any lawsuit that she would win against the shooter would probably result in a payment of 40 Legos. Ouch. The boy is six years old. The shooting happened on January 6th, and the mother faces up to six years in prison. I think it's obvious who the teacher should have sued. Could it be Satan? Tom Tursich spent over seven years walking 28,000 miles over 38 countries searching for the meaning of life. Dumbass should have just ordered Chinese food delivery and he could have found the meaning of life in a fortune cookie. And he could have gotten winning lottery numbers. And he could have saved his feet a bunch of blisters from all that walking. The hell was that noise? <laughs> After his friend died at 17 years old, he started to fear his own death, which led to this spiritual journey, which resulted in his DNA being scattered in more countries than dinosaur bones. You would think that someone from the suburbs of New Jersey who feared death would not go on a walking tour of third world countries. He said that the lesson that he learned was about creating happiness and trying to make the world a better place, which is what I'm doing from the comfort of my bed. Bye. Ow, comfort? I don't know about that. Ow. Bye.